I'm doing a run in Elden Ring where about every one to two minutes, a random effect occurs, whether that's stretching the screen, spamming attacks, or even closing the game. Since the challenge of this run really comes from the occasional effects that occur, I'm not going to be limiting my build. For each area and boss fight, I'm just going to go ahead and use whatever I feel might be best for that specific event. I figured the best place to test this challenge would be the freebie boss in the first cave that you get to. It ended up not being as free as I thought it would. Oh, oh no. <laughs> this, this is terrible. Oh, okay. The next try I ended up getting the same effect. <laughs> Again? God. Once that little test was done, I went to go grab Torrent, but the game had different plans for me. What the? Oh, my game closed. I kind of forgot I put that in. Back in the game now, and I get to see a new effect this time, and this time it was actually pretty helpful. Nice. I didn't have to press a button there. It was already nighttime at this point, so I decided to try fighting Knight's Cavalry. Uh-oh. It's too widescreen. Too widescreen. What am I facing? I really wasn't doing too bad, but I did end up taking too much damage during the effect. I ended up getting him one shot, but that was by being greedy. Oh my god, I'm so dumb! I wanted to get maybe a level or two before fighting Margit, as well as getting a bit more practice with some of the effects. Stopping by one of the easy caves, I get to see a couple new effects. First was the shrink screen effect, which isn't too bad as long as I get close to my monitor. Later on in the cave, I end up getting the rotate screen effect, and this got to be one of the worst effects that I've added, probably second only to outright closing the game. Oh, oh no. I can't do this. If this happens in a boss fight, I'm cooked. For the boss fight in this cave, I only had one effect play, and it only made me slow walk. Now the slow walk doesn't necessarily prevent me from sprinting, but it does keep me from going at normal walking speed. But still nothing too bad for this boss. We make it to the first hurdle of a new run. I really think I just need to survive one effect, and then I can fight Margaret like normal. And of course I end up getting an effect the instant the boss fight starts. <laughs> oh no. This big screen or zoom in effect really sucks because I can barely see anything. Luckily though, it occurred at the beginning of the fight. So I have about one to two minutes to kill them with no randomness, which isn't an issue. After Margaret, I went straight to Stormbell Castle. The running code actually managed to mess me up several times here at the castle. Even enemies that should normally never give me trouble killed me. It wasn't hard to manage though, a death here and there was easy to deal with. I made it to Godric and tried to fight him a couple times, but the effects ended up killing me. And actually for the first time in this run, I died to a direction being held down. Which wasn't actually that bad, because it was nice to see that piece of code actually affect the outcome of a fight. I felt I wasn't packing too much heat yet, so I went to fight some other bosses. But this is where I found out how hard this run could be. I got cooked a bunch of times by a Crucible Knight. The screen changing effects probably would have been fine, but anytime that I ended up getting one that maybe spam something, it was GG. Oh, there he goes again. Spamming attacks. <laughs> Decided I needed to go even smaller than this type of mini boss, so I went to a catacomb and my game closed. Now I feel like I've showcased how the random things will mess me up in a fight, but it's not just combat. Obviously times when the screens get squashed it makes it harder to attack and dodge, but also makes it harder to traverse the world. Looking at the map for points of interest is almost impossible. Picking up small glowing things on an already small screen makes me squint. If I'm stuck spamming an attack, I can't go through a fog wall, and even trying to run past enemies can be hard if my code is trying to make me run in the opposite direction. Anyways, I finish up my little rune grind with an Erdtree avatar and head back over to Godric. Again, I'm not restricting my build here, so I'm going to use whatever I want. Right now I'm using the starting scimitar and I'm also using the wolf summons. 
Though the wolf summons end up getting murked pretty much right away. The first half of the fight was normal. No issues and it was looking like I might get through it without an effect going off. And then I got the worst one. Oh no. <laughs> this is the worst. I can do it. I was able to stay alive and get some hits in before getting the weirdest end to a Godric fight that I've ever had. Is he still dead? Okay, that was the weirdest Godric kill. Now that I'm in Liernia, I go right to the Glintstone Dragon. The fight was easy, but I'm starting to notice how weak my weapons are. I do get a small screen during this boss, but it's not hard to deal with. Once I pick up the key, I go to the academy and make it to the rotating lift where another effect almost kills me. I almost die again later on because I started spamming attacks in the middle of a room with a bunch of mages. For Radagon's Wolf, I didn't end up having any issues and I was able to beat him without any effects occurring during the fight. Renala ended up being a longer fight than expected. The current setup just isn't doing enough damage, but since I don't have a build restriction, I'm not sure what I want to invest my upgrade materials into yet. Anyways, for the second phase, the wolves are the only ones attacking her because I'm stuck jumping for 30 seconds. Once I'm released, I try to finish her off before another effect plays, but my screen gets a nice rotation. Oh no. It wasn't going to stop me from charging her though. Next, I gather a couple more levels from some easy bosses. Program tries to mess with me, but it's nothing too crazy. Finishing up the lake, I need to fight Loretta. Just as I was about to fight her, I start spamming attacks. Lucky for me. I make use of those 30 seconds. When it's over, I am able to take Loretta down before another effect decides to play. I pledge myself to Ronnie, and next up on the list is Kaelid. First boss on this list is the easier of the Kaelid Erdtree avatars. Again, I got an effect before actually starting a fight, but I fought so many of these things that I didn't care to wait for it to end. Shit. This time without the dumb effect, I killed it easily and used the runes to grab a few more levels. I couldn't see the actual stat increase, but that's fine. Make it over to the Rot Dragon, and this fight was much harder than I thought it would be. My swords are doing so little damage to its health, even when it jump attacking its head. This prolongs the fight, which means more effects that could be played. I was also a little bit cocky during this first attempt. I got an effect that unequips my weapons. The dragon was almost no health left, so I thought it would be fun to use my fist instead of putting my swords back on. But that ended up being a mistake. That's fine though, on the next attempt I wasn't going to play around. I'm just going to go ahead and fight him normally and my game closes. Third time's the charm for this one. Continuing on my dragon hunt, I fight Grail next. I don't know what was going on, but this fight was definitely getting to me. I was playing poorly and mistimed a lot of dodges. Then I had the game closing effect multiple times during this fight. You've got to be kidding me. I programmed the script to treat all the effects with the same weight except for the one that closes the game. That one happens half as much as the other 14 effects that I have. But somehow in this fight it happened a lot. By the third time I was losing it. God damn it! Eventually I get it. Next I quickly take out the other Erdtree avatar and start chipping away at the mother dragon. I have some frost and a little bit of bleed, but it still takes forever. With a few more levels now, I go fight Commander O'Neill. No notable surprises occur this time. I guess my code was on a two minute break. I do this so I can start the quest to help Millicent. Once I get her back up on her feet, I skip to Alta's Plateau. 
The whole reason I go to Ultus Plateau is so that way I can activate this specific teleporter and kind of jumpstart the Radon fight. There are still no rules for what I can use, so I didn't hold back against Radon, summoning a bunch of the NPCs. Right when I get in melee range, I lose most of my vision on him, but this doesn't stop me. I can kind of gauge where I am and I don't stop attacking. During this one effect, I was able to get him well below half health. After the meteor, I could apply Frostbite again, and from there, the rest of the fight was a breeze. After killing Radon, I always find myself attacking the other horse riders. The duo tree sentinel boss was next, but I fought them one on one. I get the attention of one and then go through the giant door so I don't accidentally attract the other one. Started to spam rolls during the first one. For the second, I brought the wolves out. This one didn't have an effect, so it was just a normal fight. Before going straight to the next horseman, I took a detour over to Stormhill so I could grab Godric's Great Rune. I don't plan on having a bunch of rune arcs, but I wouldn't need a ton if I just use one and don't die. It was time to fight the Draconic variant of the Tree Sentinels. Fight started normal. It's really easy to get Frostbite to proc on these guys. I did switch from the wolves to the Skeletal Militia, just because I have never really used these dudes. Draconic Tree Sentinel was going to be easy, until I got the skinny screen. I didn't run away though. I wanted to beat him during the effect, but I was taking a bit too much damage. Once the effect was over, I got the last of my licks in. A little update on my gear since I'm about to fight Morgoth. I have two normal swords that are plus seven and my spirit ashes are only plus one. Now that I'm in the capital, I need to go challenge Golden Godfrey. I was able to stumble my way across the rooftops and run past most of the enemies. Just before entering the arena, my screen flips again. It's fine though. I'm getting a little better with the screen upside down. I'm still relying on my Frostbite sword, but of course it doesn't matter in this fight since Godfrey is immune to things like Frostbite and Bleed. The immunity helps make the fight longer, which means we get to see another effect happen. <laughs> Again? Unfortunately, he has too much health left for me to end it during the effect. Immediately head to Morgai, and this fight was very uneventful. For almost the whole first phase, I was playing without a HUD because it got turned off. When he started going to his second phase, I took the chance to turn my HUD back on, but I kind of wish I left it off because it would have made the end of the fight cooler. I end up getting the slow walking effect. I can still run and roll with this effect for the most part, but it really tries to make me walk as slow as possible. Before fighting Godskin Noble, I fought the Tree Spirit in Mount Gilmere. I got him just below half health and then got the minimize screen. Small screen isn't too bad because I can still kind of tell what's going on. Now that effect was not as challenging as the next one I experienced. Just let me pick it up. When I'm spamming attacks, it makes it very difficult for other buttons to be read. So picking up an item is hard and it's made a lot harder when I'm on horseback. I quickly run through Volcano Manor and get to the Godskin Noble where the effect starts right away, making him as wide as possible. I only get a few hits in before the effect ends. The rest of the fight is easy because I don't have any more effects play and I have the advantage of a Frostbite Sword. Next in the boss lineup, I have Rykard. Using the Serpent Spear, of course, I can get the first phase down below half before getting the spam attacks treatment. I kept getting grabbed here. I got super lucky and was able to use my flask right when I got up before the script took over again. Most of the next part of the fight was uneventful until the very end. 
I had the slow walking effect, but I don't think that's why I died. I just messed up and got Wombo Combo. The next try was a lot better. The script didn't hand me anything until the phase transition. By the time the fight actually started, I didn't have to handle with the rotated screen for too long. I was able to beat Rykard just before I started to spam jumps. If you're going to step away from your computer while playing Elden Ring, make sure you don't just get up and walk away while you have a script running that messes with your game. Did I die? I took a little detour from the main quest and focused on Nilsson's quest line. Similar to when I fought the Godskin Noble and got the wide screen, for the Godskin Apostle fight I ended up getting the skinny screen. Once Millie and I were done with that fight, we went to the Gargoyle fight just before the Grand Lift. And this fight was a bit long, but luckily the effect timings worked out in my favor, only causing a wide screen and walking backwards during DPS. For some extra levels, I then fought Borealis. Everything was going well until I started to spam attacks. It happened right as I stunned him, but that wasn't enough to save me, since the effect lasts for a full 30 seconds. On the next attempt, I had the same effect trying to kill me, but this time I got lucky. I had a little ice chunk that I could hide behind. Sometimes during the effects, I can get other actions to register, so I was able to roll into position. The Ice Chunk blocked his breath and roar attacks. After that, the rest of the fight was normal with no effects playing. And this is where the gauntlet of bosses begins for me. Fire Giant is always a drug out fight, so I knew I would experience a lot of randomness during the fight. Spamming attacks was apparently a popular effect during this recording day. I was able to use the momentum from attacking to slightly maneuver around his attacks. During the second phase, I get the white screen while I'm clipping his toenails. I can still vaguely tell what is going on, so it's not hard to survive. Once that was over, it was just a matter of finishing the fight. Throughout most of this video, I've explained how the effects give me trouble during boss fights, but here's a reminder that it's not just the bosses. For context, holding A down really just means moving left. It's just in keyboard terms. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. That's crazy. Next in the gauntlet, we have Godskin Duo, and I'm thankful it only took one try. I start off by putting the skinny one to sleep with a sleep pot. The first part of this fight was intense. I'm trying to melt him and then once again get the spam attack action. I knew I was going to take a hit, but I got lucky and squeezed in a flask between attacks. Then I got lucky again because my next attack that actually lands stuns him out of his rolling attack. I didn't even know that was possible. I wasn't out of trouble just yet though. I needed to turn around and try to get some distance from him. Thankfully the effect ends and I can roll away again. I killed him just in time to start fighting the other one. And I get a little risky trying to melt him, taking some unnecessary hits. I managed to get away and heal, which was probably for the best because another effect begins. This time I'm spamming jump, and I gotta say, I think the jump over the fireball was pretty cool. I kill the skinny one and put the big guy down for a nap, which allows me to get a ton of hits in. And here's a little tip for anyone that might not know it, but during this fight, when you kill one of them, you should continue to attack their body. Even though you aren't hitting anything, the shared health hitbox is still there, so you're able to squeeze out even more damage. With one more attack, the boss is beaten. Before Malekith, I wanted to get rid of the Tree Sentinel outside. Everything was going fine, not a single hit taken until the very end. Did you catch what happened there? I'll play it back one more time. I did mess up my roll on the first attack, but as I went to roll the follow-up hit, an effect played at the exact same time. It wanted to remove my HUD. Since the effect opens a menu, I wasn't able to roll, resulting in my death. At least I took him down with me. The Malekith fight wasn't too exciting in terms of randomness. The first phase was pretty fast once I inflicted Frostbite. The second phase did see a skinny screen appear. I spent most of the time avoiding attacks, since it's hard to gauge how close I actually am to him. 
I did have a cool moment in one of my failed attempts. Spamming jumps is not what I want right now. Oh, oh, maybe? That's crazy. After Malekith, I continued forward to Gideon. For practically the entire fight, I couldn't see almost anything. This didn't stop the fight from being easy. I think I would have needed an upside down screen for that. Anyway, the time saved fighting Gideon was wasted on the time it took me to kill Godfrey. I died so many times here. Right off the bat, I get an upside down screen. Then I get a long screen. Then I get a spam attacks, which for this fight is probably worse than the rotated screen. The fight overall can be very long, leading to a guaranteed effect occurring at some point. On my successful attempt, I actually got an effect during both phases. For the first phase, it was a rotated screen. It would have been smarter to just back away, but apparently I'm not all that bright and tried to get a few hits in. Once that ended, I could progress to phase two. For this section, I get spamming rolls, which is not normally too bad, but for the entire arena stomp at this point, not being able to jump sucks. It lets me out just in time to recover and get the last hits in. It's finally time to end the run. I was able to burn through Radagon thanks to Frostbite. I had one effect, but it wasn't going to hinder me from beating his ass. Pretty sure against Radagon here, I only got hit once. Elden Beast, however, was going to take a while because I'm not able to bleed or cause Frostbite on him. I did technically get an effect to play, but it happened while I was attacking him. My script tried to unequip my items, but since I was in the middle of attacking, it prevented that from happening. And obviously this is because you're not able to unequip equipment while doing certain actions. The god was slain and I had beaten the game with a bunch of random effects trying to kill me. This was a fun run. I liked that I could use whatever build I wanted and the challenge was from an outside source. I didn't really get creative with the build though, pretty much using the starting weapons and armor the whole time. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you. See you later.